So if there is any questions from yesterday's session. Oops. Okay. This is the high level architecture that uh, I was just talking about. So if I may repeat these steps one more time. The first and foremost thing is you need an infrastructure. Once you have an infrastructure ready, you need to copy the binaries, then extract the product and install the product and create an instance. So if I have to explain Informix architecture to someone who is not from the Informix background altogether. So this is a high level architecture. If someone comes to me and asks me that Ravi, can you please help me understand Informix? If he or she is from an application development team, this diagram will be sufficient for them. At a high level from the installation directory, you can create multiple instances. We can think of instance as a DBMS or a manager. Under a single manager, you can have multiple databases. Right? So under a single instance, you have a multiple databases. Right? If someone would like to access a specific database, for example, this DBN from server instance to DBN from server instance to. They basically need five configuration parameters. Anyone who would like to access Informix database need five basic parameters. The first one is server name or IP address, port number. database name instance name user id password if anyone would like to access a specific database so they need to understand where is what is this instance name where this instance name is running the port number and the database name followed by the associated user ID and password. Any questions till now? Shankar, Raviteja. No. Okay. Now in the next slide it gets a little complicated. Why? Because we are getting inside the database. We are getting into the storage model. We are getting into the storage model. Yesterday we looked at a different we looked at a definition called database is nothing but data plus base. It's nothing but repository of data. Now when I say repository, I have to store this at somewhere. Now what are those fundamental building blocks of storage within a database? They are instance. Instance have something called DB space. DB space has something called chunk. Chunk has something called space. Instance, instance has something called DB space, DB space has something called chunk, chunk has something called phase. Don't get confused, there are two different tracks here. What I have been talking about here is an instance and a databases. That's what we spoke about in the previous slide. What I am saying now is the instance 
from a storage model have db spaces these db spaces have something called chunks the chunks have something called pages but before i go further let me make shankar as a presenter and show you what i am talking about shankar you are ready yes yes sir so also give me the keyboard and mouse control so can you take me to that uh, informix environment vm to open the pm air workstation real time situations lo vm ber me install chestaru sir servers it it can be possible man people can still do it on vms but but licensing is there there are licensed vms okay yeah open the, oh, connect to that through putty let me take control console your license also expired man i think it's been 90 days that we installed it in a number of files was the last log in december january your license also expired that's okay that's of no use Let me make the presenter myself. it's it's not responding just just give it a minute
So what I'll be doing is I'm going to remove my RHL1 box, that VM, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new Linux virtual box. So this is a very important topic, an important concept actually. If we don't have VMware, what you have to do is you have to partition your Windows environment. You remember in, in a, probably when you were in college or some when you were in school, whenever you are working on Windows, at a starting it will show two different options the moment you reboot. Do you want to get into Windows or do you want to get into Linux? You don't have to do that anymore. You don't have to do that anymore. <clears throat> you have somewhere here A couple of videos I kept it here. So anyway, these recordings are here, which talks about. Uh, let me share you this link. So what are the products needed for informing setup? How where do we download WinSCP and Putty? How do you transfer products using WinSCP? Informix Linux installation, IDS product extract and installation. Right. What is this finger family doing here? Now what I have done so far is uh, I have extract, I have downloaded the products that are needed for the setup. Now once I log into the VMware, so let me remove this VM. So this is anyway expired. Once you install the VMware workstation, or as a matter of fact, you can use Oracle Enterprise Linux. There is something called OEL, I mean, not OEL, uh, Oracle VM. Also, you can use Oracle Virtual Machine. Also, you can use. Doesn't matter whichever one that we use, but VMware is the one that we use for standard. You have to go to File you have to go to new virtual machine option. Please note that at a work you don't have to do this because there is a Unix team which will do this work for you. They will just give you the mission the way you want it. But since we don't have any Unix team here to support in our training purposes, we are going to do all this on our own. The moment you say file new virtual machine, it gives you an option that do you want typical or a custom. Taviteza, please make a note of it. Uh, Shankar, if you want to proceed, we even do that at the same time. Okay. So typical, click on next. It will give you the three options here, three radio buttons. Do you want it to install on the disk? Disk image file, do you want to install later? Choose the second one and choose the location where you have downloaded this ISO file. Right? This is an ISO file for your operating system. Once you choose this, it says at the bottom that you choose Linux 6, 64, or if you have chosen 7, it says Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, 64 bit. Click on next. Give some name here. Full name, just say Ravi. I'm just creating a user called Ravi with password, password. I encourage everyone to give password and just password in the lab. When I click on next, I'll see some screen like this. What is the virtual mission name you want? Say, test one was the name I would like to give. And then click on next. The moment you click on next, what it shows is specified disk capacity. Specified disk capacity, just leave it with 20 GB, but select the store virtual disk as a single file. Then click on 
Next. Ravi, can you increase the size of the font? I mean, it's not uh, visible. It's not clearly visible. Uh, is it? Is it possible? Uh, yeah. I'll Magnify try. or something. Yeah, I'll try after the installation setup. You know that because I need to change. Let me see. Let me figure that out. Okay. Now, Okay. Oh, it's asking me to log off, man. I don't want to do that later. Okay, yeah, next time we'll do it. You can continue. Yeah, it's asking me to log off. So, there is some way I can modify it. So, let, let me show it one more time. Can't even at least okay. the basic stuff, right? It's just not visible at all. So this is what I'm talking about. Go to file, new virtual mission, next. So just give the name, user ID, password is important here. Whatever is the password we gave this is important. So test one. Store as a single file. Just finish. It picks up by default 2 GB. Just finish it up. And what it does here is it starts installation of Linux. So that Linux is what we need as a base to install our Informix product. So this process is going to take some time. This is going to take like 10 to 15 minutes. <clears throat> because it has to install a bunch of packages.
So it's starting the installation process. So you're just going to install more than like 1200 back oh so close to 938 packages here if you want to take a break for 10 minutes please go ahead and take it's going to like 10 to 15 minutes what happens is once it installs all these packages right it's going to reboot automatically once that reboot is done from then our setup starts you you guys take a break for like 10 to 15 minutes in the meantime it uh, finish up this package installation Okay, sure. Uh, the password I gave is password only. That is the same password for even root user. So I'm opening a terminal here. So this, this somehow looks like the same like Windows desktop. On the desktop in middle if I click and click right click and say open in terminal, it opens a terminal like this. So if you see my current user ID is Ravi. So let me switch to root. The root password is also the same password I gave initially. It's a password only. <clears throat> now when I say host name, the host name still points to localhost.local .local domain. So I change the host name to test1. When I say if config mode, this is the IP address. I need to add it to host here. So this is a second step. Under ATC is config. If I see VIA network, the host name needs to be changed here. Test one. And you need to stop the firewall. So you just need to reboot your box. This is the basic thing we need to do because we don't have a specific Unix team. That's why uh, I'm doing it on behalf of them.
I'm logging in here. Now one important thing to check is, uh, do you have a familiarity with the PuTTY? You know what is a PuTTY software? Yeah. Right. So on the PuTTY what I do is, uh, I'll add this host. So what is the IP address? We should be able to connect to this from our local box. So the password is login is root, password is password. Let me increase the font here. So you're able to see okay, no? Yeah, I can see. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is uh, I need to copy that uh, product, the Informix product. So if I go back to this notepad here, if you look at the major steps that we need to do, so we got the Linux box created, we got the product downloaded. Now I need to copy this product. Do you have familiarity with WinSCP? Ravi? WinSCP? No. Okay. WinSCP is a software that helps me to transfer files between Windows to non-Windows environments. Very easy to. Very easy to. You just need to go ahead and download. So I pinged you some links, right? If you go to that channel, uh, you can find out how to download WinSCP and install it. Okay, okay. It's a very easy. Go to new site. After the WinSCP installation, you search for WinSCP here. Mm -hmm. Give a host name. User ID as root. Password as password. And You save this as a test one and just click on login. What it opens is it opens your screen into multiple sections. Two parts. On the left side is your Windows box, right side is your Linux box. This is your Windows box. So where do I have it? under C users here I can see my Informix product which is only 500 MB so here where I will be going is I will be going to this mode folder forward slash MIT so let me create one directory called db2 If I come here and refresh, I will see the db2 folder here. All I do is I will drag it and drop it on the right side. So it's like copying. You might be, we might have heard something called FTP or SCP. 
It's the easy way of transferring files between two environments. It's something like you can go to winscp.org. I'm sorry, it's winscp.net. You can click on installation package here. So it's just the yeah. installation starts. Okay. The same thing you need to just execute, run it as admin or you need to let your support team install all of them for you. The file is copied here. So from this moment what I do here is if I go to db2 folder here, the file is created. So it's it's a dot tar file. <coughs> I need to extract it. So here we are creating db2, right? What is the oh, reason? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's not db2. It's a comic. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Right, you have the mountain comics. This is an Informix product for x86 64 mission Linux. It's an um, FC file, F stands for 64 bit. When you say tar hyphen XVF, it will just extract that Informix product here. Once you extract that product, when you do ls, you see a bunch of files here. One such file is ids underscore install. When you run this ids underscore install, this is where you are starting the installation. It's launching the installer. Okay.
Ravi? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. You can continue. Right, so what I have done is I just started the IDS underscore install. So it opens an environment like this, but I'm exiting from here. Okay. So there are some prerequisites to do. The prerequisites I have written in this document and I'll share this document with you. The first thing is we need to have an Informix user ID. For Informix user ID creation, first we need to create a group. We created an Informix group, then created an Informix user with an Informix group. After that, uh, we need to go ahead and add this port in ETC services. The port number should be the same or we have to do a different thing? It's, it's your wish. So, I just picked up this port number randomly for that instance. Make sure that this okay. port number is not in use. Okay. U4551. Make sure there is no one else is using this. In the entire ATC services. You just need to choose some unique port number. Then under CD mount informix, make DIR IDS121. Where is this IDS121? Right. <coughs> this will be the directory that we are going to install for Informix software. Please see this. We are doing the installation as a root user. Install this it up there. Are we chair as a group add user add? No, no. I, that you can delay it uh, till instance creation. launching the installer. Hmm, what else we have here? Yeah, you can delay it till here if you want. See this, it throws something that you okay, can press enter. Okay, to begin installation, I'm pressing enter. So it is asking me to agree to some general license. I'll press one and enter. Where do I want to install this? Mount Informix IDS one to one. Yes, this is the correct path. Do I want a typical installation, custom installation, or only extracting the product files? I'll go with the typical installation. Custom will give you some options to choose between the products.
so um, the host name is test1 port number it will try to install the apache web server so i'll just do you want test oat open admin tool this is oat protection uh, that's okay go with the default one admin and the enter password as password I'm pressing one. Ravi, you have given a previously a port number, right? Uh, what is the port number and the, and the recently I gave another one port number? Both are different or same? They both are different. The port number we first gave that we are going to use. We are at to use that for our informix instance. What we have just okay. created is there is an open admin tool that comes with Informix installation. You can ignore that. It tries to start Informix at 8080 port number. It's a GUI way of administrating your databases. It opens some kind of GUI tool to open your database, administer your databases. That you can ignore. That installation anyway fails here. So it's saying that the directory that we created is not secure. I'm just pressing one to automatically secure. So it's asking me that do you want to create database server instance? That means do you want to create DBMS server instance? I'm saying that no. We'll create manually. It will show these are all the stuff that it's going to install. Disk space required, disk space available, press enter. It's now ready to install here. Now press enter. going to take five minutes. Any questions uh, on this so far? Uh, what is the open admin tool? It's, it's one of the inbuilt that comes with the Informix database. It's a GUI way of administering databases. As a DBA, the option you have is you log into database through these black and white screens and you say, okay, start the database, we'll stop the database and monitor the database. OAT is a, is a free tool that you can set up so that from GUI mode, you can see the databases. From graphical, you can see databases. You can start and stop. That's why it's called open admin tool. It's an open admin tool. Okay. It's not a monitoring tool, it's an administration tool. So you can quickly see what are the databases are there and that kind of information. So we are installing through this command, right, ideas uh, to command them. So is it possible if we can do from the graphical user interface? Yeah, you can do that, but that's not working for us here. What happens is for that to happen, you have to set up these environments like export display and exposed plus. Probably what happens is in a real time you will be doing these two and the moment you say ideas underscore install it's going to start in a GUI mode only but here GUI mode is not coming up.
here the UI mode is not coming up because this is a VM that's something that I created. It's missing some kind of a graphical libraries in this. So that's why it's not popping it up. link I pinged you, open admin tool.
look at this finally all production installation is successful so I just need to press enter to exit the store The OAT comes with 12.10 uh, only or with the earlier versions also? Yeah, I think it's it started installing. Look at this time. 11.50. It's been introduced with 11.50. Okay. Um, why they are not using in my environments? I mean, it's not needed, man. It's not that you have to use it. Okay. I mean, it, it will be easy if you use that. It's just one of the features. That's it. Okay. okay. Now the installation is complete. If I go with this document here. So the responsibility of root is done. If you go to CD mount infomix IDS121, you see a bunch of files installed here. Okay. These are all the files that came as part of the installation. Now our next step is now our next step is creation of instance and the next step after that is creation of a database. Now for creation of instance we have to follow some basic process. So that process is detailed here. The first thing is I'm going to change the password for Informix to password. <clears throat> then I'm, I'm just going to blindly follow these steps. Okay? I'm switching to Informix. Then I'm saying that CD mode storage there is no directory so I'm making a directory so the permission is denied so I switch to root and I'll create this directory also I change the ownership for this directory to Informix So the storage will be the storage or repository for the databases going forward. Now if I come here, now this data directly exists here. Now I'm touching these two files. I'm touching these two files. When I say ls-ldr, these are the two files that got created with zero size. Now the next step for me is change the permissions of it and I'm going to create this file like this with this basic environment. I'll explain in detail what is this when you are really doing it but for now initially blindly follow the basic steps. The first environment variable is Informix DIR. Where is your product installed? What is your Informix server? Where is your onconfig? Onconfig is a file which has all your configuration parameters for your Informix instance. Informix SQL host has the server name and port number mapping defined. Path, it has all the executables. LD library path, this is for libraries. Term and term cap, this is for terminal settings. These are the basic environment setup you need. Right? And after that, I'm sourcing the environment. When I say on start space minus, you see an output say they saying that shared memory not initialized for informing server IDS 121. That means your instance is down. <coughs> we have just did a setup. We haven't even completed it. We are halfway through the setup of IDS 121. Why it is saying Informix Server 121? 
because the informix server environment variable pointing to IDS one to one. Right? Now before we bring up this instance, right? All right, so I think it's the same one that I used it for Shankar in the previous class. So I go to Informix DIR, then go to ETC, then I'll copy configuration file like this, and I VI this configuration file because this is the same configuration file I gave it here on config.ids121. Now once I open this on config.ids121, I'm going to modify these below parameters. We'll talk about these parameters, important parameters in detail later. But for the basic setup, I'm going to modify the root path. Ravi, can you uh, repeat those last three steps? Okay. So these are the ones going into Informix DAR. And a bit slow, okay, because it's too fast. Okay. Yeah. Are, are you okay till the environment setup on on start space minus? Yeah. Okay. When I say on start space minus, what it shows is, it shows my environment is not up. My instance is not up. Now to bring up your instance for the first time, you need to do some more setup. That setup is, you need to first get into your Informix DAR. What is your Informix DAR? You have already created that as part of the environment here. If you go to CD mount storage, you have an environment file created in the above steps. When you do a cat of that environment file, you have an Informix DIR here. So this is a directory where you have your Informix server installed. You need to go to the directory and inside that there is a etc directory. Here there is a file called onconfig.std. This onconfig.std comes up by default with Informix installation. This is a file that your Informix server looks, looks for various initialization parameters. When you are starting or rebooting your Informix instance database, this is the file it looks forward to. Now, we have specified a different file here on config.ids121. Now, we need to modify this on config by copying it into on config.ids121. Now when you open this on config.ids121, this is a configuration file that is needed for Informix instance, but this has like close to 1600 lines. It has the syntax of parameter name, what is the value? Parameter name, what is the value? Like this, there are close to 200 or 300 different parameters here. I'm not requesting you to get into this right now, all of it. But for our basic, basic setup purpose, these are the five parameters will change right now. The first one that we are going to modify is root path. Search for root path and press enter. Here is a root path value. I'm going to modify this root path value to the file that I have created in the graph. Similarly, the next one I'm going to modify is message path. Let me search for MSG path and I'm going to modify this to the file here. The next one I'm going to modify is tape dev and L tape dev.
Don't ask me what are these right now. I'll, I'll slowly explain it. I think I messed it up. So, uh, Ravi, a small doubt. We have created that um, on config.std, right? So, that is for specific instance or for every instance we have to create a new, uh, I mean, a new on config.std. Yeah, I'll answer that question just uh, to finish up this. So I'm modifying this tape dev, I'll tape dev and I'm modifying this to server name. IDS one to one. I modified this into five para these five parameters. Now to answer your question is a very good question. By default what we get is we get on config.std only with Informix installation. So I, mod I copied this on config.std into on config.ids121. So to answer your question, it's specific to only this instance. If tomorrow you create IDS122, you need to have a separate on config. And you need to have a separate environment variable. Don't worry, we'll, we'll do that setup. So for today, we'll just start with one instance. In the next classes, we'll take an assignments to create multiple instances. You, you'll understand that. So far, good. Yeah. Yeah. Now the next thing you need to modify is a SQL post file. Like on config.std, you'll get some file called SQL post.std. This is the file that specifies a mapping between the server name and port number. The port number you gave in ETC services. Now you need to copy this to SQL host. Now I need to open this VI and modify this file. You need to come here. You need to add a line here. The way this line is, in this format. The line takes four columns. The first one is server name. The second one is a protocol. I mean server name in the sense Informix instance name. Protocol. Server name where this instance is running. The port number. You remember in previous steps we added this port number. Just write and exit. Now the next step you need to do is let's you know initialize the instance you can say this you can just blindly run these steps to see what it returns then you can say envi ID is Ravi our host Ravi our host name is test um, one right but uh, we can oh. see that is RHEL yeah thank you thank you I think I copied it from here test <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So if you put a RHL on, it's going to fail anyway. When I say ping test one, no, I'm able to ping. Yeah, thanks for that, man. Now I'm going to, I'm just blindly following the next steps. So I'm sourcing the environment. Now when I say onstat hyphen, it's down. Now the next step I need to do is on it hyphen I Y V. Minus I says initialize. This is the command you run. This is the option you use only for the first time. Hyphen I stands for initialize my instance. Y stands for whenever it asks any question just say S. V stands for verbose. Show me on the screen whatever is you are running. Show me on the screen whatever you are running. Now don't worry about it. I might be rushing through the first time, right? But I'll share these documents so whenever you have the setup ready, we'll go through it slowly, right? Because there is no easy way to do this. Now what I have done here is I have initialized my instance using hyphen I also. Okay. Now the moment you see some output like mode five. 
that means your instance is created when you say on start space minus you should be able to see a message here called online So that means it's a good success. You are able to bring up Informix instance. Earlier you used to see a message when you run on start minus call shared memory not initialized, but now it's saying that online. So Ravi, this on start dash i by v is used for uh, on on in it. Is used for um, instance, I mean, instance creation or what? Exactly you, you yeah, yeah. I'll go there. I'll go there slowly. I'll go there. Now the instance is up here, and I'll talk about it. The commands. Now the next step for me is there is a tool called DB Access. It takes a week to get used to all this terminology, but I have a tool here called DB Access. If I go ahead and press Enter. It will open a screen like this with various options. There is an option here called database. How do I move between these options? Press right arrow. And I am putting cursor in the highlight on the database and I am pressing enter. Now I see something called database screen here. If I go to select here, select and press enter. So it's not able to show me. It's still saying that it is running. Ideally, it should be able to show me four databases here. That means something is not right here. So it's saying that cannot locate IDS one to one port. Didn't we add it that port? via EDC services it's only one two port okay. I think there was a mistake from my side let me modify this to IDS one to one port let me even go ahead and modify this document Now it should be okay this time. Now what I need to do is I need to bring down since I have changed the port number I need to bring it down. How do I bring my instance down? On mode minus KUI. Don't worry about these commands because I have so far introduced three to four different commands. What are they? One is on stat hyphen on init hyphen IYV on mode hyphen KUI TV access four different commands so we'll slowly learn about them now when I say on mode hyphen KUI my instance goes down now let me reinitialize my instance one more time <coughs> hyphen I you need to be very careful while using it right <coughs> If instance is already initialized, it will fail with an error saying that you are trying to reinitialize here. Now it failed. The instance initialized reinitialization failed. Right? Because the instance was already initialized. Initialized means when you are trying to reinitialize, all your work is gone. So you don't really have to use an option called hyphen i here. Hyphen YV will be sufficient. Hmm. Server is online. When I say DB access, if I go to database and press enter, if I press enter on the select, why I'm not seeing the databases here? It takes some time to build the databases. There is a command called on state space minus m, right? It will show the message log. 
server message log. If it has any issues, it will show here. Now let me try DB access one more time. Database select only CC user came. There is a message path you remember we modified. If I go here, so this is the message path it writes the information. Message path it writes. If I VI this file, it failing with some issues here. Error building Sysmaster database. Why the size of individual too small for the current workload resulting in each log file filling very quickly. I think one more parameter I need to modify here. So this parameter let me modify it to 12. I'll tell you why I'm modifying it later. instance when I am trying to reinitialize it now it will fail because I need to modify a parameter here called full underscore disk underscore in it if I need to set it to 1 then when I say on it hyphen iyv then it will allow the reinitialization anyway I will share this recording Tomorrow what I'll do is I'll go ahead and create a second instance so that I'll explain you in detail. Today we'll just digest this terminology. When I say tail hyphen f, it should show that building of that sysmaster database is complete. It's showing you that information. Yeah, sysmaster was built successfully. Right. So when I say DB access, now if I go to database, if I go to select, by default I see four different databases. Now I'll stop right here. Okay, I don't want to proceed further. I'll stop right here. What I will do in the next class is, uh, that's tomorrow, I will share today this recording. I recommend you to go through it once. I will go ahead and create one more instance. So if you look at here, mount informix, mount storage, you have env.ids12. We'll create env.ids13 or 1.4. And I'll show you the steps one after the other again. This is just to make, because there is no easy way to explain this, right? There is no easy way. If you are familiar with other databases, it might be pretty easy, but since you are starting from Informix, so there is no easy way. So I might have rushed today, but tomorrow it will be very slow. So the objective for me today is just to walk you with terminology. So please see if you can have okay. setups ready, the basic infrastructure ready for you to install VMware and RHL. Otherwise, I'll show you it in my laptop itself. Okay sir. And when can we get that recording? Uh, probably by evening 3.34 I will upload you and share you the link. Okay.